So it's my pleasure to be here today and uh, to discuss with Frederic. So today we'll be talking about liquid biopsies. They've really revolutionized the field of hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. Can you summarize what are liquid biopsies and how you use them in clinical practice for a patient with hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer? Liquid biopsy uh, allows the uh, screening of uh, um, DNA or RNA alterations from the tumor by only taking a blood, uh, blood sample. So it's a non-invasive technology. Um, it's uh, also allowing uh, serial testing because it's just a, a blood test. Probably the limitation will be that uh, this uh, uh, tumor DNA is uh, among uh, uh, a lot of other uh, normal cells DNA because it's coming from dead cells. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a certain amount of tumor and of tumor burden for having uh, enough uh, uh, CT DNA to be, to be uh, found in the liquid biopsy. And also we need to have very sensitive technology for CT DNA. So usually it's digital droplet PCR, that is a targeted test, so you can only find what you are looking for, or NGS, uh, and usually we use uh, uh, targeted panels uh, for liquid biopsy. I see. So what's preferred now and what are the actionable alterations in hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer? In hormone positive uh, metastatic uh, breast cancer, we have now several alterations. Uh, this is probably the type of uh, breast cancer where we have the, the, the highest uh, therapeutic solution or propositions. We have PIK3CA uh, mutations, uh, AKT1 mutation, P10 mutations, uh, ESR1 mutation, and uh, also we need to get uh, uh, gene BRCA testing, but usually it's an other, another test and it's not on CT DNA, but on, on the DNA from normal cells from the blood. And we can also, using liquid biopsy, also uh, looking for uh, uh, less frequent alterations, but that are usually for third, fourth line of therapy, like uh, NTREC fusions. So um, we have different approaches because we have to look about what are the, the treatment options that are available for our patients. And usually, uh, uh, at least in my, in my country, but I think it's the same in US, we, uh, when we have a patient with metastatic breast cancer, we start with a tissue biopsy. It could be a problem when, when it's a bone biopsy, uh, uh, and we need to be very cautious about uh, how we decalcify the tissue. But looking at the biomarkers, it, it's really easier and faster to go to liquid biopsy. Makes sense, as opposed to a tissue biopsy. Yes, exactly. So then, related to, do, to this, when do you do a liquid biopsy, and do you do it only once, or do you do it serially? So, we usually do it at least one time. So it depends on the drug availability. We are used to uh, do the liquid biopsy after progression, after first line therapy. So usually after progression, uh, after uh, CD46 inhibitors. And uh, at this point, uh, we were looking at um, P3CA, AKT1 and uh, P10, and also uh, two uh, ESR1 mutations, because those mutations, ESR1 mutations are induced there are resistance mutation to endocrine therapy. Uh, now with uh, uh, new drugs available uh, in first, uh, first line, like uh, uh, INAVO, we need the information of peak 3 ca earlier in the course of a disease. So probably we can do all the biomarkers before the first line therapy. So we do the, the tissue biopsy and we do, we do the liquid biopsy and the genomic test on the liquid biopsy. And if the patient is progressing after the first line therapy, we can do a, a very targeted test just for ESR1 mutation at this point, because we need the information just before treating the patient. Which makes sense because the less estrogen is approved in this setting. And because this is an acquired alteration, you have to do it serially because otherwise you yes. could miss. Yes. What about the other case scenario? If you do liquid biopsy and there's no tumor DNA present, you know, when do you see that and yes. what does it mean? So. It happens, it's really correlated with the burden of the disease because um, uh, in some cases, the liquid biopsy will be completely negative. It doesn't mean that there is nothing on the tumor. So really, it's very important when we have a negative liquid biopsy to go back to the tissue 
and to test on the tissue. So that's okay for pic 3 ca AKT1, P10, because they are very stable alterations. But for ESR1, uh, we, we have to do another tissue biopsy at the moment of progression, which is not very fair for the patient. The patient doesn't accept all the time. So in, in this case, for ESR1 mutation, we have to retest uh, after a few weeks or a few months to see if we have uh, uh, the apparition of uh, an ESR1 mutation. Yeah, which makes sense. Any final thoughts or comments related to liquid biopsies? Well, I would say that uh, liquid bi biopsy have uh, completely changed um, the um, diagnostic pathway of our patients. This doesn't mean that we don't need a tissue biopsy because we need to be sure that it's a metastasis and we need to reassess the proteins that we cannot look at on the liquid biopsy. It's uh, cheaper, it's faster in terms of uh, results, and also it's very good for uh, serial alteration, dynamic evaluation of uh, uh, the uh, uh, appearance or disappearance of some uh, alterations. The only caveat is the sensitivity. So we need NGS or digital droplet PCR, and it will depend on the alteration we are looking at. And uh, uh, in case of negative uh, uh, results, retest uh, on the tissue or wait for a few uh, weeks and uh, uh, retest the patient. But it doesn't mean that there is no alteration in case of negativity. Yeah, that's a very important. Yes, very important. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for the discussion.